so long. Um, there's loads of people looking at laptops all the time. Little laptops. What's happening? Hey, shh! Thank you very much. I'll just take charge a little bit, shall I? Um, yeah. So everybody's looking at their laptops, which is all very well and good, but it's not convivial. And the Luddites wouldn't have liked it, and I don't either. So I'd be really grateful if you didn't, because I'm very nervous. So anyway, um, I shall do my best not to be completely incapable of speaking, because my adrenaline levels are relatively high. So, um, at the risk of being thought of Cassandra, I'm going to argue that Bitcoin was, aban Bitcoin was abandoned on the shores of the internet by a Trojan horse. And that it's full of me memes that would be better left outside the um, firewalls while taking the token. Well, first off, who thinks crypto commodities like Bitcoin are the future of money? Anybody? Okay, so there's one person who thinks big, two, three. So there's like, well, we almost, we almost agree, right? Well, I hope to convince you that the Bitcoin model of crypto commodity money in general is broken. Not that I need to, because you've already made that relatively clear. Not because it's technically flawed, but because scarcity is its foundational assumption. If you take a look at this £20 note, we all know it's a token of meaning. But for now, I want you to think of money purely as an abstraction layer. This simple token hides the unbelievable complexity of modern economy and makes it understandable to our limited minds. And most importantly, it scales. Whereas traditional, traditional gift economies, which relied on distributed consensus systems of reputation within a close, close social context, Oh, this is very unfortunate. I'm afraid I'm dyslexic, so I can't read very quickly, and I've had to be so nervous I couldn't print it off the top of my head. And I've managed to break my feet. Where am I? Sorry. It's not the projector. It's the person in the room. Take a deep breath, it's okay. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> here. The East Week has crashed. Yeah, that's absolutely bricked. But it would do, wouldn't it? Uh, yes. Have you got it online somewhere? Too, or no, it's, it's, I just need to restart Eastleaf and then paste it back in again. And delete the beginning. I'm sorry. Just take this out of my question time because I couldn't be, give you any answers anyway. So, uh, that's all right. Where are we up to? human relationships as a distributed um, system of consensus is that they don't scale much past Dunbar's number of 150 relationships. So at some distant point in the past, when social systems grew too big for people to track who owed what to whom, as ingenious little monkeys, we invented a technology to fix the problem. And thanks to money, <coughs> When presented with almost any economic choice, all you need to ask yourself is, is it worth the candle? Oh, just before I move on to Bitcoin, I want to ask, who thinks that the adoption of peer production, and we kind of covered this earlier, general purpose um, AIs and robots, um, is about to produce a sharp rise in productivity 
of material abundance. Anybody? So there's people who do think that that's going to happen, right? At least there's one person here. <laughs> and who thinks that that will, I could say disrupt, but I prefer totally <laughs> fuck the economic order within almost no time at all. <laughs> okay, so at least there's more of them. So how thinking. do you think that, without thinking, you would tell me to not paying attention? And one other question. Is there anyone here who thinks that the Earth is the center of the solar system? <laughs> the clue's in the name. Okay. So to be fair to those that did believe that the Earth was the, cent was the center of God's plan, when you see the sun go across the sky, that's how things are. For almost everything you want to do, it's a good enough description. But it's still wrong. So what would it look like if it looked like the Earth rotated around the sun? Anyway. Back to this, the 20. This amazing paper API makes it possible for everyday commerce to be uncoupled from the social ties that used to mediate all human interactions. And with money, we can get total strangers to do our bidding, just as if they trusted us personally. So how did we invent cash in the first place? I'm sure at one time or another, you've heard the, how money grew out of barter. So, the short version is, I want something you've got, you want something I've got. Let's swap. Woot! We just invented market economics! Then, well, if you wait, all this swapping shoes for candles is difficult. I don't need any more shoes. So let's make it easy and swap things for something rare, like, I don't know, gold. Woo! Yes! Oh, we just invented money! Anyway, I said it was the short version. So, now we have money, we can do a cost-benefit analysis and work out if it's worth the candle. Now that phrase makes almost no sense today, but if you look back just a few generations and compare the cost of candle, lit, candle light to hours worked, you'll find that in the 1800s, you could only buy 10 minutes of light for a whole hour's pay. Whereas now, an hour's work will keep an LED lit for an entire year. And that's one example of an uncountable millions of commodities that sur surround us today in such abundance that they're too cheap to meet them. So if you hope that the superabundance I asked about earlier will improve society when it arrives, bear in mind, in effect, it's already here. And yet, we still have poverty and discontent. Even in advanced economies, there are people who live simultaneously in objective abundance and subjective deprivation. And I'm completely ignoring the rest of the world, which is what we normally do. But you and I are here because we do want the world to be a better place. You have a vision of what the results of re-decentralization will be, and you think you can help build it. And so did Satoshi Yakamoto, which brings me to the title of this talk. It's not a computer science kind of broken, so let's just pretend that we've overcome blockchain bloat, blockchain bloat, diffused the concentration of power in mining pools, and put the resources pumped into proof of work to some good use. Now ask yourself, having achieved all of that, would adopting a perfect version of Bitcoin bring about the more perfect world your heart knows is possible? Or will it just recreate the imbalances of power and wealth that we're attempting to resist today? The real problems we face aren't ones of technical implementation or even of mass uptake. The greatest threat to the social success of re-decentralization are the conceptual assumptions we apply to their design. We want to liberate the internets with free software, unless you're into open source and... <laughs> But, how free is this software? Our imaginations are full of metaphorical binary bob blobs and legacy code. And what <laughs> patchy commenting does exist is either really, really hard to read or refers to something that's since been deprecated or deleted. Now, it's obvious that our, our language and with it our values and most of our ideas came from our culture. And many of our, our beliefs were imposed by, with, on, with, by sorry, propaganda, like advertising and education. 
And here's something you probably didn't learn, get to learn about at school. For those of you who don't know, anosognosia is where a person with a disease or disability is subjectively unaware of their condition. And it's most, con uh, it's most dramatic when a blow to the head or a stroke results in paralysis. Then, someone with anosognosia, when asked if they think they could raise their paralysed arm, will say, yes. Then, when you ask them to try, they'll fail. So then you ask them, why didn't you raise your arm? And they'll say something like, I didn't, it didn't feel like it. Or, my favourite, that's not my arm. <laughs> and even when reminded of the reasons for their paralysis, which they can acknowledge, the next time you ask them about the arm, the loop will repeat. Now, anosognosia is a medical condition, and it seems bizarre to most of us, but it's an objective example of, a, of the subjective difficulties all of us can have in updating our habitual beliefs and expectations, even in the face of ample evidence. Just think of geocentrism, the humours, epicycles, other people's religions, and on and on. Oh, and that includes, and most importantly, the idea of money coming from barter. If you think that uh, cryptographical enclosures will create digital incentives and thus crypto commodities can be used to incentivize people to save the world and overthrow the state, you're deluding yourselves. Now, in this audience, I was going to say that some of you may find that a bit harsh, but it's not true, is it? Because half of you believe me already. And now it's bloody broken again! <laughs> Oh, it was, I've, I've rehearsed this talk, I don't know how many times. Who's got the morphic resonance fields for uh, machines going wrong? Bastard. Yes, again, I get to talk, uh, like answer a few questions. Not that you were going to have any. Because I'm right, so you wouldn't want to answer them. What was the last thing I said? Nobody was listening, were they? <laughs> I wasn't. I was too busy trying to say what was being said in my ear. You're deluding yeah, yourself. On deluding there. yourself. Thank you. I can look for that. <laughs> right, there we go. So, shift. He fumbles with a machine forever. This is what, why you should never let anybody look after a computer, society with computers. Anyway, some of you find, may find that jarring. But I'm telling you, unless you already know, in which case I'm ranting for nothing, okay, um, that the evidence from anthropology and archaeology is clear. And it has been for a century. Money doesn't come from barter. I mean, yes, barter did and does exist. But in real life, it's only used to mediate interactions between potential rivals and strangers. The exception being where people habituated to money no longer have access to it. For example, the use of cigarettes as money in prisons. The stories people tell themselves to make sense of their world, they give it meaning. And so they become fixed as truths. For all our delight in human ingenuity, and eager anticipation of the coming singularity, people still feel ch fear change and are more likely to deny reality in favour of their own beliefs than in the reverse. The, tra the crowning achievement of capitalism has been, able has been to convince itself that market economics is responsible for all of the fantastic advances we've made in science, technology and philosophy since the Renaissance. And if that were true, which it isn't, it's the abundance of energy, information that's responsible for the um, modernity. But even if it were true that the market had filled the horn of plenty, apart from that abundance, how much better off are we in terms of our liberties than the slaves who were housed and fed by their masters, or the serfs who owned, owed just 10 days labor a month to their lords? But whatever the dominant system, whether feudalism, slavery or wage, slave, or wage labor, there's been a long history of resistance to domination. Regardless of, the dis and, sorry, regardless of the discontent that idealists like us 
who press for change, the vast majority of people remain passive and content, incredulous to the political zeal of the few. Most people can see no reason to dispute Thatcher's claim that there is no alternative. And that's Anna Sagnosi all over, with familiar ideas demanding that reality conform to expectations. And the myth of barter has been repeated over and over again till it's as ingrained and natural to popular ideas of uh, money as the earth being the centre of the cosmos was. So I don't really blame Satoshi and his acolytes for having followed their scarcity logic. After all, they've been programmed by their culture too. So Bitcoin, despite American hopes, and it's not really their fault because they've got free market economics uh, libertarians, despite American hopes that Bitcoin would disempower the banksters and reinstall, restore the one to true money, crypto commodities won't set the wage slaves free. Not before they've elevated new masters. And that's implicit in the idea of Bitcoin as gold 2.0. Just remember that the Iron Age kings who um, hoarded gold 1.0, and so with Bitcoin, which emulates the master's tools, and crypto commodities like it, will just recreate the same dynamics that gold had in the first place. Deterring free riding and of a particular sort was the reason that tyrants minted coins from gold in the first place. Yes, gold does make money hard to counterfeit. And if you can't cheat, you have to play the game by the rules. But the trick is to notice who makes the rules. <laughs> Bitcoin's architects have tried to solve the problem of the internet work society by porting in an Iron Age app called Scarcity. Surely this imposition of code as law contradicts the potential of the limitless new medium of the internet. As free software advocates, or as a free software advocate myself, I see cryptocurrencies as DRM. The logic of DRM is, if we don't stop people from sharing everything, our stuff won't be worth anything. <laughs> and I'm convinced that Bitcoin and altcoins like them will be widely adopted by people already habituated to the proprietary restrictions and copyright. So to sum up and reiterate, Barter was for use between strangers and rivals, and it's a trustless system. <laughs> and it offers protections which don't apply where social reputation can be tightly coupled to personal interactions. In natural communities, with strong social ties, there's just no need for barter. People live without, mutter, without money to record their status all the time. Just think of your, how you interact with the people you, that you trust and love. And that's the model that we should be trying to em emulate with re-decentralization. We have the technological capability to remove the limitations that we've become used to from money. The necessity to simplify all the history, personality and conviviality of human interactions and hide them behind the green curtain is, anti is antiquated. Many of you in this room, room will no doubt want to preserve the advantages of amnesia and anonymity that old school money has. But abstracting complexity to such an extent, extent whether, uh, that status, whether earned or stolen, can be hoarded and misused, is bad. <laughs> uh, to, be, um, to be effective, our distributed systems need means of agreeing on the social standards of the other participants, which we've seen fantastic examples of the beginnings of today. Um, Money did serve that purpose in the past, but the cost of the data losses were too high. Our problem is not one of technical implementation, or of strategy, or even of mass uptake. The greatest threat is the concept, the, our, our conceptual habits. My aim with this talk has been to challenge you to raise your metaphorical arm, and in implementing our new infrastructure, which is what I like instead of the internet of things. To become aware of the delusion that marking that, uh, that something. Why would we choose to keep the separation and isolation of com competition and, commu and um, accumulation when the internet is a means of connecting networks of people together? 
the challenge is, and it's been looked at uh, already, to work out how we can use distributed databases and strong consensus to enable people to reconnect in natural communities of reciprocity <coughs> and collaboration within a medium designed to e equilibrate away from dominating strategies of artificial scarcity. I'm convinced that the tool tools we build now and the stories we tell with them will change the world. Thank you. Right, I don't need that. I'm no longer a cyborg. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm, like I said to begin with, I'm verbose, so I had to restrain myself to that. And I'm, very sorry about the technical difficulties with my memory. So um, I don't think it's likely that anyone's going to have any questions that haven't already been kind of brushed on. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I sympathize uh, and I'm part of this uh, research, critical research about nano tools, etc., etc. And I appreciate that you also <coughs> dismantled in some way one of the myths, which is, for example, the idea that the money, the money comes from the bottle. Mm. However, I think it's, it's one of the most complicated institutions we live through, money. Yes. And I, don't, I, I would like that we continue, <coughs> and I understand that now we are in a crisis of the monetary system and of the financial system, and there is a, mm. a need, a social need that is spread about inventing and, and uh, changing the system through which we <coughs> mainly imitate our economic life. However, I think we have to complexify a lot the approach. Not in 15 minutes, you don't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For example, the most, the most uh, um, realistic, we don't have a consensus about how money uh, came out uh, in, in human life. And you know? is but one of the most uh, uh, realistic uh, uh, narrative uh, implies a fundamental role of the state. And oh no, that's the, absolutely, with the imposition of money as coinage, yes. So, that's yeah, a, fundamental, a fundamental part of it. Yeah. And, and there is a lot of historical evidence. Yeah, yeah, Even right. capitalism, know, yeah. the money came yeah. out. Of yeah. Even the biggest, and if you look at the, at the central bank, how yeah. it, is, it is, it's a very complicated institution in, in the uh, modern societies, and you will find there a very com complicated uh, network of relationship between the financial markets the, and the financial institutes, institutes and the institutions and, and that, the that's state. Not that's not that's commodity, commodity money, though, is it? The, que the question <laughs> is that uh, we have to avoid to approach this huge issue in, through uh, uh, huge simplifications. This is the but that's mind. why Bitcoin's broken, because it's so simple. So, for so example, all I'm not, doing not that keep that out the people. state, because we are not going to address seriously no. this issue without addressing the role of the state. Thank you for reiterating my talk. I think that was absolutely the point I was making. So I agree with you. So, 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 you're, so in a huge trust society, money helps because uh, worldwide because you it's fantastic for making trustless relationships right. possible because it's so, all in the. So in, in, a, in a linked data not. world, a global distributed database, I mm -hmm. suppose you'd want to have some kind of system whereby you could say, uh, I put this amount of effort in building this house. Mm -hmm. This house is altogether being worth this much effort by all of these people, yeah. and so the worth the worth of the house would be like. Uh, assessed by the by the value of the amount of work that people put in it, so that you could something like that. Is that kind of the? Uh, there are, certainly there are there, there are ways that people do that, even as simplified as putting the number of hours and saying you should trade with hours. I mean, it's you know there's just no way I could approach uh, approach the answer to any of these questions in this time. So, but yes, absolutely. Is, is there a book that points to that already? Or? Oh, just a few. So Karl Marx wrote three top three books um, <laughs> <laughs> on it, and I have just talked about a bit of the first one. So, uh, come on. so um, can you say a lot of management commons from this kind of perspective? Well, that's absolutely. So, so this. Let the, the, me give a specific example. Okay. Just the atmosphere. All right. Right. If yeah. you're going to desire to win a CO2 position, trading, CO2 something. Yeah. How would you approach uh, those kind of limits? That's on the absolutely the fundamental um, uh, 
process that, I mean, I think you're, you're saying carbon cap and um, trade. No, no, I'm just asking how you'd approach it in this kind of paradigm. Well, no, oh, okay. So what I'm saying in this kind of paradigm is that people in social relationships who feel like they are empowered don't have incentives to do destructive things. The Nash equilibrium we live in under capitalism is shit. What you need to do is design a, a system of reciprocity that doesn't equilibrate to the worst common denominator. The game theoretical... Um, uh, we're, we're in a prisoner's dilemma, yeah. and the dominating strategy is to fuck everybody else over as long as get away with it. Absolutely. So what you have to do is have a, and you can't do that in a closely coupled society, because the if you go around nicking all the food, they kick you out. And that's, yes, exactly, you're, it's a Hobbesian idea, yeah. Yeah. which you know, which is why I had Leviathan in there. So. Absolutely. But it was, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I took yeah. hours on that. <laughs> it was worth it. And my time's up. <laughs> Last question. I'll put it on there. Oh, well, oh, sorry. <coughs> you mentioned Denmark, which is yes. the number of people that allegedly... Yeah, between... Number, well, it's a, it's a funny way of working it out. Like, let's look at monkeys, how many well, they count, let's multiply brain size, it's great. Let's not worry How are you going to overcome it? Ah, don't overcome it. Don't o that, that's the problem, you see. What we've done at the moment is gone, oh my god, I can't count it. Let's give it to someone who can. And they just, uh, they federate in a scary way. So the king has his minions, and the minions have a minion in the hair, and that's exactly how we run the corporation. So that it's exactly, the federal, the feudal model is how we structure our businesses, or majority of them. They aren't built as collectives, they're built as hierarchies. Because it's how the habits we've had for 500 years of putting people in that particular, or a thousand years, and capitalism's only been going for 300, so it hasn't forgotten yet, right? Um, so as far as the, the way that we, as humans, interact, 150 p interactions is great. The problem is that when you get a siren server like Twitter or Facebook or whoever it is, they get really, really famous, and people go, I like that video on YouTube, and another 100,000 people go, oh, look, flock together, because everybody watches that one. It's still shit. You need 150 people to know who, what they're talking about and then let them be part, mm -hmm. separated and connected. I've got to sit down because I'll talk again. Uh, so, but we actually need to clear the room for like five minutes because we need to rearrange with table. Okay. Uh, so you can either go around and visit the fab lab or you can help. I mean, no need to clear if you help.